What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I explained some of the issues I was having with getting the engine ready to run in the D100. Uh, I had a coolant leak, I had some fuel issues, some wiring, and some exhaust issues. The final issue that I talked about at the end of that video is what I'm working on now. Um, my Torque Flight A904 three-speed automatic will not go into gear any gear, uh, reverse, any of the drive gears, I got nothing. So started doing some investigating and here's where I'm at so far. So when I first got this truck, the Torque Flight A904 three speed that was in it had some issues. Um, it, it just wasn't shifting right. So one of the first things that I did was I decided to do a B&M Transpac shift kit on it. So that meant drop the pan, pull the valve body out and do some modifications to the valve body. When I did that, it looked like somebody had done a partial shift kit. Like, I think I was supposed to remove a couple of, of uh, check balls. Those were already gone. But an oil passage that was supposed to be drilled wasn't. The, there was a couple of holes in the plate that were supposed to have been drilled. Those weren't. It was just, it was really weird. So I ended up doing the Transpac shift kit, put it all back together, and it seemed to help. It seemed to do a lot better. Then when I took the engine to the machine shop, I figured, well, n since it appeared somebody had been in the transmission, I decided to do a full rebuild on the transmission. Figured while it was out, might as well, better safe than sorry. So I did that. And then my transmission sat for about a year waiting to get the engine back. So fast forward a year, get the engine back from the machine shop, get everything put back together and slap it all in the truck. Fire it up, no gears, no reverse, no forward gears, no nothing. Um, so doing some investigating, doing some reading online, trying to figure out what might be going on. My first thought was the pump. Great. But after doing some, because the reason why I, I started looking at the pump was I decided to do some pressure checks. And the first check I did was for line pressure out of the right side of the transmission, put it in neutral or put it in first. I had no pressure, went through the gears, no, I mean, that gauge didn't budge off zero. <sighs> Great. So started thinking that the pump was bad. Uh, doing some more reading, some more research, found that I had coolant going out, uh, I had fluid going out the coolant line to the thermostat, which will eventually go to the cooler when the fluid gets warm enough. I had fluid in both the feed out to the cooler and the return from the cooler. So that would make it seem that the pump is working. So since it seemed like the pump was working, I decided to drop the pan and pull the valve body. And here are a few things that I found so far. So the first thing that I noticed obviously is the pan. I mean, there's obviously some debris in here, which I would kind of expect to see some with the rebuild, um, just, you know, brand new parts, everything flowing. It's gonna, I would expect to see some stuff in here but some of this stuff is bigger pieces. These are, these are rubber or they're, they're soft. So I don't know what exactly that is. The mag plug on the drain is obviously has debris on it. And I'm going to take a magnet here wrapped in a paper towel. There's stuff, the inside of the pan yeah, you can see there's, there's definitely magnetic debris in here. I'm really hoping my transmission isn't shot. But the biggest issue that I found is with the valve body itself. So you come over here and here's the, the shift lever, right? When you grab the, the actual lever here. And this thing goes here. You know, this is where your gear the cable for my 
shifter goes. And this is, you know, the gear shift. This is exactly how I found it. The piston isn't riding. This is, I don't know how much play they're supposed to be. I think that might be a little excessive, but that caused the little cog here, the little arm to not engage the piston. So I'm thinking this may have been my, my biggest culprit. It's, I mean, this thing was shifting, but it wasn't actually shifting the valve body. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to tear open the valve body again, give it a good thorough cleaning, uh, clean out the pan, obviously, uh, really make sure that I got everything assembled correctly when it comes to the valve body. And then, uh, you know, if I find anything else in there, I'll be sure to share it, but I'm going to start tearing into this thing, clean it all up and work on getting it back together. After inspecting the valve body, I didn't find anything else wrong. I didn't find any debris blocking any of the passages. I didn't find, I didn't find anything inside the valve body that would show any other type of damage or concern. Um, so I went ahead and I just cleaned it all up and I put it back together and I slapped it back in the transmission. One thing I did do, and I'll include a diagram here of like the parts breakdown of the valve body for the 904, was I added a second really thin washer uh, at the top of the gear detent, gear detent lever. There's a, like an E-clip that holds that in place. And there's already a, a seal and a washer there. I added a second washer, just a real thin washer up on the top between the top washer and that E-clip. And that eliminated a lot of the play in that lever. Uh, once I reinstalled it back in the truck, I did run it through the gears. Everything seemed to shift all right. And it, the, the backup light switch even worked just fine. I think what happened was in a previous video, I had found that this switch for the backup light wasn't riding the rooster comb correctly. And so I had what I thought was kind of repositioned the rooster comb a little bit, kind of pried up on it a little bit and got it to ride better on that switch. And I think what actually happened was the whole gear detent lever rose because of that play. And that I think is what caused the arm to not ride in that piston and not allow the transmission to shift in and out of gear. So like I said, that's all back together. It's back in the transmission. I got to get over to my local O'Reilly AutoZone, whatever, somewhere and get some transmission fluid. But until I can get over there and get that, I'm going to go ahead and do some work on the exhaust. Um, I had previously rebuilt some of the exhaust because I did have some leaks and I do want to do some more welding at some of those uh, clamp positions. I think I want to weld those up. But when I rebuilt my exhaust, I took out the H pipe or the cross pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that thing fabbed up and weld it into the truck. All right, so fast forward a little bit. And as you can see, the D100 is back on the ground. So what does this mean? Well, first, the exhaust. Uh, I welded up two of those clamp fittings and I reinstalled the H pipe or the cross pipe. And that really seemed to kind of even out the, the uh, sound of the exhaust, cleaned it up a little bit. Sounds a lot better. Still kind of loud, but you know, that's just, it is what it is. It's, that's the hot rod. Um, I think I may have an exhaust leak. So that's gonna be the next thing that I'm working on. I think I've got a leak at the header. Um, gotta investigate that a little bit. But more importantly, the transmission. So while the truck was still up on stands, I got the valve body reinstalled. Filled it up with fluid, started, started, started up the truck, and I've got a tire rotation. I, they're moving. Um, so I uh, kind of worked through all the gears, let it run in reverse, let it run in, actually let it run in neutral for a while. Then, you know, went to reverse, went through all the drive gears, and just kind of let it, let it sit there and run, let the fluid flow everywhere it needed to go. 
kept topping it off. So now I've got good uh, fluid levels and everything seems to work. The only thing I haven't had an opportunity to really check yet is the cooler. So uh, in an earlier video, you can see where I installed a thermostat inside the frame rail on the driver's side. Um, that thermostat, you know, takes the fluid that goes out to the cooler, routes it back to the transmission until it hits about 180, 185 or so, I think. And then that routes the, that thermostat opens, routes the fluid up to the cooler. Well, during all the running I was doing, it looks like, according to the temp gauge, that the temperature never got above 160. And that's kind of expected. It was just sitting here spinning while up on jack stands. It wasn't under any kind of load or anything like that. So I'll have to keep an eye on that when I get it, when I get this thing out on the road and maybe have to take a look at that while I'm driving. Um, so this thing is just about ready, I think, to fire up and, and get out on the road and give it a shot. Um, I do have a few issues I still want to work through. Like I said, I'm working with, I'm going to investigate the header. I think I have a exhaust in the driver's, or a leak, an exhaust leak in the driver's side header. I hear that that tick, um, really annoying. So I'm gonna investigate that. I think I also have some vacuum leaks. Um, the carburetor surges. So I'm gonna investigate and see if I have some vacuum leaks. I already know I found one. Uh, there was a, on the back of the carburetor, the line that goes to the PCV valve. Uh, there was a, like a little T fitting there and that I was tightening, that fitting was loose. And as I was tightening that down, the nipple, there was a little broke off. So I gotta go get a new fitting. Um, but that was just weak. It may have already been cracked, I'm assuming. So I'm gonna get a new fitting, put that thing on there, and then I'm gonna start doing some checks for vacuum leaks. So maybe I'll do a video on all the little troubleshooting stuff before I get this thing on the road. So thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll catch you on the next one.